We had to flip the entire building 180 mid build. We're building a 98 square metre two bedroom home nestled into the bush. The boys have done piles, had to drill down four to five metres, fill it with concrete. Everything logistically on this site's a bit of a mish, getting it from the road down to site. Since then we've built a subfloor, frames went up, roof went on, we've closed it in and now we're ready to paint the inside. I'm Josh, a builder here in New Zealand and we'll talk about the build, how we've tackled some of the tricky details and stick around to the end of the video, we will talk about how the architect who had never visited site made a mistake and we had to flip the entire building 180 mid build. Huge, awesome, open living with the large sloping ceiling facing north. Wasn't when we first started the job. That's part of what we'll talk about at the end. But our kitchen goes over there, lounge over there, and we've got two bedrooms and two bathrooms and a laundry and an office down in the pool. Little tiny office in there, look at that. That's like real cool view of the greenery. Little main bathroom over here. Bedroom there. Walk through laundry here out to a back door and then the main bedroom here. So we're on the back side of the property now and you can see how far out of the ground the house is. So on the front corner of the build over there is the minimum 450 out of the ground. Back corner there is over two meters, and so the best way to tackle this sloping site was with a timber subfloor. Here you can see our subfloor plan. So we used engineered piles, had to drill down three meters, huge poles in the ground. You can see that we used 140 by 90 SJH bearers. There was five of them, and we then ran 140 by 45 joists at 400 centers. A beautiful little subfloor. So flooring sheets went down and we had a nice, flat, clean surface to work on. This is such a huge milestone for any sloping site because now you have a shape of the building and you have a flat surface and it feels so different standing up here than where I am right now. You know what else feels awesome? When you go ahead and click subscribe, we're trying to crack 100k subs and we need your help. Let's go back around to the other side of the property. So technically we have driveway access over there. But it's shared with a neighbor, it's quite a sleep site and the client mentioned they are never ever going to drive a car down here. And we have road access up there and we were able to get a 28 meter higher and we were able to deliver all of our frames to here and slid off and stood here. So we cracked on with it, we stood frames, we carried on with roof framing, and then our guys got to work laying the roofing iron. So as well as the roof being clad in iron, the walls are too, and the idea is that it looks like a little hut tucked into the bush. Cladding it with metal was heaps of extra work. We'll show you some of the details we tackled here in the plans right now. Here is an external corner. And so just like all of our other builds, we still do a building wrap in the dash line here. We do cavity battens. You've got to do four on the externals. This is quite common for most weatherboard details. And then we run horizontal vertibat. So vertibat has grooves in it and an angle on the surface so that it dispels water. Then we run our corrugated iron sheets and then we have a corner flashing that goes over at least two ribs. Where it starts to get tricky is when we do windows. This is looking at the side of the window. 
So standard detail here, you've got your wrap and your cavity batten and your middle coming down. But then you need to get a flashing behind your window and over your cladding. And the thing is, all these flashings need to get custom made and you don't know where the lap's gonna be until you put the metal up and the windows in. And so compared to other processes such as weatherboard, it's a very disjointed process. The window's in, the window's out. You have gotta measure this, gotta measure that. Yeah, it's fiddly and you have to unpick work. For all those reasons, that's why I prefer to always work with traditional materials such as weatherboard. Along the way, we decided to put in some steps for better access to the site. That meant that all of our traders could park up there and easily get to site. And the moment we built this deck, it changed the entire feel of the property. No longer were we slipping around in the mud, but also the clients started to get a look and feel for where they are going to start living their life. And this is real important, especially on a sloping site, that you do your house build and your landscaping cohesively together. Once friends were up, windows were in, and it was all closed in, we could crack on with the inside. We did pre-wire, pre-plumb, and we put insulation in the walls. Then we could get jib board on there. If you haven't, go and watch our jib video about why New Zealand's obsessed with that. Next steps in here is paint. The kitchen's been measured and an install date has been booked. Once the kitchen cabinets are in, we can put hard flooring down there, carpet in the rooms, and it will well and truly become a home. So let's talk about the original design, and I don't want to chuck anyone under the bus, but what happened is we had an out of town architect with incorrect topographical data. And so while it makes sense on a piece of paper, you cannot be standing on site. Just before we built the timber subfloor, we stood on site with our string lines and realized there was a huge problem. It was even higher out of the ground and where I'm standing now is the south side of the property and all of that open plan living that's down the north end was on the south end. So here is the new and improved plan with the living room in the north facing. Here's the revised elevations. You can see a far better integration with the land. Still really high in this corner here. North is over there and so midday sun is there and it sets over there. So you can imagine how bright and airy this room feels. Imagine the house rotated 180 and all of that down the back end of the property. Not only that, but if all of your access is at this end of the property, how do you get to that end? We actually enlisted a second opinion from a designer we use regularly. They confirmed our belief and we presented all the facts to our client. We were able to rotate the building 180 degrees and we were also able to drop it down. And this is really important. We've had back doors that have gone straight out to 1.2 meter drops. And that's a lot of steers or a lot of retaining to resolve. It's really important to make sure your design is a collaborative approach with your designer and your builder and your client. Find a good builder, get them involved early in the process, make sure the person who's actually going to bring this to life knows what's happening and has got a vision in their head. What I reiterated to our client throughout this is that you are spending a lot of money on this house and I get that it's consented, I get that it's taken a long time to get to this point, but if we just stop and pause and make sure we're going down the right track before we add any more money and any more cost to site, we will never regret that. Sure enough, Everyone's stoked with the rotation. The out of town architect commended us for our approach. And more importantly, the client has got a home that she is already in love with and is going to really suit the way she lives. 
If you're thinking of building you anything from a little 30 square meter studio all the way through to a 380 square meter mansion, we can take care of the whole thing start to finish. Check out our website, hit us up. We've got what it takes to take your project all the way through to completion.